visiting Yorktown and welcome to the town board meeting for March 15th, 2022. An early happy St. Patrick's Day to all. If you could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you could please join me in a moment of silence as we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for peace across the globe. We pray for our first responders, our police, our fire, our EMTs, and of course the bravest men and women the world has ever known, those fighting in the United States Armed Forces. Thank you. Do introductions, starting to my right. Good evening, Diana Quas, town clerk. Good evening, and an early happy St. Patty's Day. Tom Diana, deputy supervisor, councilman. Matt Slater, town supervisor. Ed Lachterman, councilman. Sergio Esposito, councilman. Luciana Howitt, councilwoman. Adam Rodriguez, town attorney. We have Maura Weisleder, our deputy town clerk. Okay. So a couple things to report. I want to begin by thanking everyone for coming out to the uh, prayer vigil that we held on Sunday. Uh, it was a beautiful prayer vigil for uh, the people of Ukraine. I really want to thank the entire Interfaith Council uh, who participated. Uh, I thought it really brought our community together. Once again, Yorktown showing that when people uh, are in need, we always step up to the plate and we always find a way to provide a helping hand. And we collected an incredible amount of donations. We are still collecting donations here in the lobby of Town Hall. Um, and we are working uh, with, uh, with some partners uh, who are providing the shipping directly to those in need in the Ukraine. So it was uh, really a fantastic uh, cold. But <laughs> oh, it was cold, but it was fantastic. And I really, again, want to thank everyone uh, for joining us. Thank you to Rabbi Robbie. Weiner of uh, Temple Beth Am, uh, and Pastor Chris Chantelow of Grace Lutheran Church, who really helped orchestrate the Interfaith Council and bringing them together on that. Our Parks and Recreation brochure is now online. It's in the process of being mailed to the residents of Yorktown. Registration for spring programs begins March 29th. Uh, summer camp registration for my fellow parents, March 31st, 9 a.m. You can go online. Uh, and you can uh, reserve your spot. Uh, again, that's, right done, that's done right online. But then just know if you are signing up your little ones for camp, you do have to still visit the Parks and Rec office over by Sparkle Lake to bring the necessary Department of Health documents. Uh, and that is required by the County Department of Health. Uh, but still, summer's coming, and we're excited to be able to provide some great programs and great services uh, to the town of Yorktown and do it in a non-COVID fashion uh, which is which is great for everyone, bringing us back to uh, that sense of no, uh, sense of normalcy. Uh, I'm very excited to uh, to share, and I, I believe John Campobasso is here from uh, YAC. Uh, but on March 27th, I hope I'm not stealing your thunder. Uh, but Matt, the Matt Cull uh, ribbon cutting for the bleachers at Legacy Field will take place, uh, and we want to thank our partners in in the uh, YAC uh, for spearheading that effort. Uh, and really bringing a, uh, a great feature to a, a wonderful complex. And so we're looking forward uh, to recognizing uh, uh, Matt's life and also uh, recognizing the great work by our, by our sports club. So thank you so much for everyone involved in that. I am really, really excited to share that the Hudson Valley Honor Flight is taking off this spring. There's two flights, one out of Stewart and one out of Westchester. And the thing that I'm most excited about is we will be partnering with Hudson Valley Honor Flight and Yorktown will be uh, essentially the host uh, for their gatherings leading up to the flight. Uh, for those who don't know, if you've never been on an honor flight, it is a life-changing experience. I had the distinct honor of bringing Roger Thompson, being a guardian for Mr. Thompson, uh, onto, uh, I think it was their last flight. It was, it was their last flight before COVID. Um, and, and so it is, a, it is a truly magical experience from 
every step of the program. Uh, if you've never experienced it, we're going to be able to bring this right here to the town of Yorktown. Uh, and so we're really looking forward to our veterans, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Uh, if, you, if, if you know of a veteran who would like to uh, sign up, uh, Hudson Valley Honor Flight is the, uh, is the organization. It's a free flight for our veterans down to Washington, D.C. Um, they get a first-class uh, tour of Washington, D.C. Get, they get treated like, like the heroes they are, police escorts through the city. Um, uh, it, I get goosebumps just thinking about the experience, to be honest with you. And so anyone at home who's got a veteran, again, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, check out Hudson Valley Honor Flight. We're going to be sharing more information about the program uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but if you could all just do me a favor and mark down May 7th, because May 7th is the veteran pre-flight check-in. And it's going to be held right here in the town of Yorktown at the Capellini Center. Uh, and so I'm going to be, uh, and our town board is going to be reaching out to a lot of our troops, our sports organiza- youth sports organizations, and we really want to give them a, a, a great uh, a welcome to Yorktown because they're coming from all over the Hudson Valley. Uh, and so we're looking to really get the community involved in this program. And again, to, to the men and women who've defended our country, defended our freedoms, and allowed us to be here at this very moment. The very least we can do uh, is show our appreciation. And it's just a really, again, exciting program to bring to the town of Yorktown and to be a part of. And you don't want to miss it. Let's see, just a few other um, announcements. Uh, we did hear from EFC that the NIWEA grant that we are all anxiously awaiting for water is still being <laughs> held up in Albany. So at this point, uh, we're being told it will be after the state budget is passed that they'll be announcing uh, what the uh, recipients, who the recipients will be and how much. Again, the town put in for their, our cement relining project. And, uh, and so once we hear if we received uh, an allocation and what that allocation is, that allows us to move forward, thankfully, with our finance department, who's put several uh, options together for financing both our cement relining program and the water meter project program, which we've been waiting nearly a decade to complete. Uh, I know that uh, Councilman Esposito was over at the planning board meeting last night. There were two uh, approvals given, uh, one for a three-lot subdivision at 650 Pines Bridge Road, and the Wells Fargo Bank lighting plan was also approved, so we'll see an upgrade there. I also want to remind people that the Battle of Yorktown is coming up. So for all of our groups uh, who are going to participate April 23rd, you can get it on your calendars now. Our Refuse and Recycling Department is going to be starting their advertising, uh, but we are coming up to about six weeks out. uh, And it's a great community effort uh, to combat litter, clean up our town. We we know that the town, uh, uh, we've done a lot when it comes to combating litter here in our community, uh, but there's always more that we can do. And so this uh, this is a great tradition here in the town. I think it's been going on for over 30 years, and um, uh, April 23rd is is the date there. And then last, oh, I'm sorry, Maple Weekend is also this weekend, uh, so if you haven't checked, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, um, I'm looking forward to having pancakes over at the Yorktown Grange. Uh, Bry Hart, again, White Oak Farm, right here in the town of Yorktown. I say it all the time. The most southern commercial producer of maple syrup in the state of New York and Westchester County's only commercial producer of maple syrup. So we have that gem right here in the town of Yorktown, uh, another one of our wonderful farms that really brings uh, just great, great attributes to our community. And so we, we look forward to celebrating with Bry uh, this weekend and next weekend uh, at the pancake breakfast over at the Grange. And then finally, uh, March 21st, right, town clerk Diana Quast? March 21st, we expect to be breaking ground on the inclusive playground at Granite Knolls. This has been a long time coming. We're very excited about it. Um, a lot of work and effort has gone into this. We've had many conversations about this, uh, this playground. I know Councilman Diane has been intimately involved. Uh, we've had some great advocates. Our Parks and Rec Commission uh, obviously has been involved. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to breaking ground uh, in the morning of March 21st uh, when, when we, as long as the weather is appropriate and continues to warm up um, but we are planning right now for that date so it'll be the morning of march 21st this uh, great asset uh, will be added to the granite knolls sports complex off of stony street uh, and we are very very excited to finally see this come to fruition so uh, again i just want to make uh, make a mention um, that the funding for for this mostly came from a state grant from uh, state senator pete harkham 
uh, $250,000. Is that right, uh, yes. Diana? Uh, and so we thank him for his efforts in that as well. Uh, but again, March 21st, and we will keep everyone updated. Uh, and with that, that ends my report. I'll turn it over. I'm going to start actually over here with right. our Deputy Supervisor Tom Diana. Thanks, Thanks Supervisor. Um, <laughs> Diana, uh, just just to kind of echo what Matt said about the um, the inclusive playground. Would you give a little information, please, on where the people can donate if they would like to for um, uh, to the Rotary and and give that information for the planters, for the planters et cetera. Information. Sorry, I didn't mean to I catch you off guard. Probably pull it up, but okay. Um, it, it, they have a they have an email address that you should go through. So let me see if I can find that for you, and then I can. Email. All right, I'll go through a couple little things that I have. Um, our Ukraine prayer vigil was absolutely wonderful the other night. Um, I know I'm echoing what the supervisor said. Um, I was glad to see all the folks that came out. Um, I was I found it very interesting that some people I didn't know were Ukraine actually were yeah. uh, Roy Sokol, Sokol I had no idea yeah. um and <laughs> and you know to actually hear their national anthem and some and and so forth was very touching um Tony Grasso longtime resident past council person councilman um spearheaded this and we forgot to mention his wife, who actually yeah. spearheaded this also, to get this put together so that we could have this for the people of Ukraine and hopefully give them a little bit of support. So, Tony and Jenny, if you're out there listening, yes. I want to thank you yes. so much for what you've done for not only this community in, 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 in putting it together, but for the Ukraine people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, I have to read it, huh? All of it, every word. <laughs> I, I don't like you anymore. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sensory Garden, Granite Knolls, Phase 1. Mixed-use fence and planters to surround the brand-new, all-inclusive, adaptive playground. Sponsored, um, sponsor a planter. If you want to sponsor a planter, it's $1,000. If you want to sponsor a bench, it's, is that 800 Eight hundred dollars. Um, dedication plaque will be included. Um, I'm just going to go for through phase one right now because there's going to be a phase two, which will be the sensory garden. Um, you can make your checks payable to the Rotary Club of Yorktown, P.O. Box four three two, Yorktown Heights, New York, um, or you can send a donation. Uh, electronically through, is that Zeal? It's very mm -hmm. small. Zell. Yep. Zell. Zell. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, no, no um, a donation is too small for such a, a uh, worthy, worthy cause. The, um, the playground is going to be for, um, you know, handicapped individuals that are going to be able to get on carousels and so on and so forth. And actually, um, Go out and be able to play with other children. The sensory garden, which is phase two, is going to be open to everyone, as is the playground. But it's also open to our vets. It's open to our seniors. It's open to anybody that wants to just go in the uh, sensory garden and sit and read a book. You know, just check out the sites, have a cup of coffee, whatever the case might be. But it's, uh, it's, it's really going to be a beautiful thing and great for the whole community. So I just want to... to website, want more oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, yes, the website would be sensoryGardenYorktown at gmail.com or 914-589-2839 to get more information. So that's, uh, that's just one of the other things, and I just, just to echo the supervisor on that. Um, if you see potholes out there, folks, be the eyes and ears or eyes for the highway department. Give them a call. Let them know, hey, look, we got a bad one here, there, on my street or on Route Six, or, or I'm sorry, on 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 one of the town roads. Um, they'll get a list going. They'll get out and get these patched. With this inclement weather that we had, especially the freeze thaw that we had just a couple of days ago, yeah. um, we're going to be developing more. So, if you see one, report it. You know, at least uh, you know they. They're out there, but 
they don't see them all, and they may miss a few here and there. So if you see them and you're not filled in, give them a call. Um, honor flight supervisor, I have to ask, who actually was the guardian? Was it Mr. Thompson or was it you? No, no, I was the guardian. <laughs> all right, all right, because we know how he is. <laughs> <laughs> we had fun, I can tell you that. I bet you did. We I had, bet you we did. We had a lot of fun. And in uh, as far as litter, uh, you know, shout out to Dan Strauss. He's, he's a Yorktowner here that's out there all the time picking up the garbage that people throw on the side of the streets. Dan, thank you. All right, Councilman Lochterman. Sure. You know, I, I once again, I, I will just say, great job with the uh, with the turnout for the Ukrainian yeah. uh, prayer vigil. Actually, it was really cool because someone was watching on Facebook Live and ran to the store and came yeah. with ten huge boxes of diapers to send over, and and it was amazing. Uh, we helped fill up the cars at the end so they could take them for distribution. Five car loads full of stuff. Really, just. Thank you, Yorktown, for, for showing up and uh, showing everyone why we're the best, uh, best place to live in Westchester County. Yep. Um, with that, you know, I'll also touch base on May 7th for the pre-flight uh, check-in for the honor flight. Um, you cannot imagine how outstanding this is for the veterans. Um, I, uh, I had gone, actually, the flight be be before you, I think. Mm -hmm. or, uh, maybe the two before Maybe two before you, yep. Uh, but the last one out of Westchester County Airport, and my veteran was a friend from the country house where I do a veteran social. Uh, his name was Bert Houseworth, and Bert actually passed away in the beginning of COVID in 2020, not from COVID, but uh, at his, at his uh, wake, we were talking with the family, and all Bert spoke about from that time until he passed away was going on the honor flight and how much it meant. Uh, so really the biggest part of it is thanking our veterans, people lining the roads saying thank you for your service. It is amazing <coughs> and outstanding, and I can't say enough about it. So please not only come, bring your family. Actually, I ran into a friend when we were coming back home, and I asked him why he was at the airport with his kids. Did he know someone who was on the honor flight? And his answer was, no, Ed, I just wanted my kids to meet <coughs> real heroes. Yep. Oh, so yeah. uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. And, and, and what happens down in, in Washington, D.C. is just, like, overwhelming. I, I actually had a friend uh, who was going, going to go. His name is Tim. Tim could not handle the emotion just yeah. at the pre-flight check-in and couldn't, and couldn't do the flight because it was so, so emotional for him. Um, but one thing, if you do know of any World War II veterans that want to go. Yeah, especially. Yeah, please get in touch with either myself or get in touch with the supervisor's office so I could pass them right on to the honor flight. World War II vets get priority. Yep. And I just found a 97-year-old World War II veteran in our own town who has never done it, and we're, we're going to get him on the flight. And... Uh, you know, there, there's a priority for these guys so they could experience it, uh, and gals. Uh, so please, if you know of anyone, contact me through the town hall. Contact uh, Matt through his office. Uh, speak to Jenna or Kira, who do a wonderful job up there, and they will get that information out to us. Here, Ed, real quick. Uh, I just, I just got to show it. So this is, this is uh, a video of us on the honor flight. At, this is at Arlington Cemetery. Hmm. This went on for a good hour, and it's just kids coming up to Mr. Thompson just to say thank you, and it was one of the most moving and emotional things, and that's uh, and that was Mr. Goldberg there, uh, also from Yorktown. Goldberg's plumbing in here. Oh, yeah, and they were both with us. I mean, this, is, this just gives you a taste, mm -hmm. and there's nothing like it. That's beautiful. And they, they were just there. And you were telling me, Ed, about a, a time when you had... Bert at the Korean the War. South Korean, yeah. yeah Bert, I had Bert at the Korean War monument. And we, a whole line of people came up, started apl applauding, bowing, and shaking his hand. And I couldn't figure it out. Neither could the Marine gunnery sergeant that I was with. And I had stopped the last person in line. And he said, oh, we could see on his name card that he served in the Korean War. And we are all from South Korea. We appreciate. And it was like, 
wow. We, you know, literally 45 people walking up to him and just thanking him. It yeah. was just, uh, yeah. I absolutely. just want to show one more. And it's, uh, this was the group picture of everybody. These were all the veterans wow. that were with us in the blue shirts saluting. I mean, it's just, I, I really can't put into words what it means to be a part of it. So it's just exciting that it's coming to Yorktown, that we get to play a small part in the whole thing. And, and so anyone who knows someone who, you know, can make the trip and want benefit from it, just and, let us know. And by the way, it's totally free <clears throat> for the veterans. And if you want to go as a guardian, there is a $500 donation. It helps to pay for the flight. Uh, it's probably the best, well, I'll say $1,000 spent because my wife Love and I that. went on it together as, as guardians. And yeah, it, it's really a life-changing experience. Uh, you show up, though, I so with that, uh, Senior Advisory Committee meeting this coming Friday is not at Town Hall, <laughs> since the Town Hall uh, boardroom will be used for, uh, the, for auditor the auditor. Is. That's right. It I will, mentioned that. It'll be at the... the uh, the ACCCCC, <laughs> or the old sixth grade school, for those of us who have been around, or in Mr. Thompson's uh, day, just the old, the old school. Sixth grade school. No, yeah. the old school. The old school, school. right. He went That's through right. every grade there. Um, and that'll be at room 16, which is across from the gym at 1 p.m. Um, also happening in the, um, in the, uh, the uh, Capolini Center, uh, we will have uh, the Yorktown Teen Center will be having their 11th annual Hoops Challenge uh, on Friday, March 25th. That's a week from this Friday. Uh, it will be start at 6 p.m. for registration. Uh, at 6.30, they're going, to, they're going to have their um, middle school for grades uh, 6, 7, and 8. At 8 o'clock, the high school for grades 9 and 10. And at 8.30, the adult competition for ages over 19. That means Sergio is going to be dunking. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was a three-point man in my day. <laughs> uh, the, the, the entry fee is $5 for students, $10 for an adult. Uh, it's, the teen center is phenomenal. It really, really is essential that, to get support. Uh, and if, you, if you're like me and have zero basketball skills, Please just go and watch, and, and you know if you want to make a donation, please feel free. Uh, you could find. Um, so you don't pull one you of them find, uh, you, They'll have they'll have first, second, and third place winners, uh, and one ad for for the middle and high school. They'll have one adult winner, and um, you should be able to find uh, find the uh, form online for the Yorktown Teen Center. If not, um, you can uh, contact at info at yorktowntc.org and yorktowntc.org should have that form as well um, let's see uh, we will also on uh, Thursday April 21st 7 p.m. in the uh, boardroom we'll be having our Holocaust Remembrance event uh, with uh, Esther Geisels will be our speaker she was uh, born in Poland in 1929 and uh, lived in the ghettos and then had, uh, had to uh, get out of the ghettos and, and was living in the woods. Just a really, really great story. Uh, well, tragic story, but great from the historic point of view and what you get from it. Um, I, you know, I, I know that quite a few people here have been to the Holocaust Remembrance events. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, you know, you watch it on TV it's a much different story meeting a Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and then, you know, if you ever get a chance you, and you think you're prepared and you're not, and I'm sure other people in this room have experienced it, if you ever get the chance to actually visit a concentration camp, uh, as, as my daughter took me uh, on Father's Day to one when we were visiting her in Germany, it's overwhelming. You could feel the despair. You could feel... It, it just gives you a whole new outlook for everything. So, um, you know, I highly recommend coming by, listening to Miss Geisel's, and uh, it will be on town TV as well and will be recorded. So, Ed, repeat the date again for folks. April, Thursday, April 21st, 7 p.m. Okay. I tell you, Ed does a hell of a job putting this on. Um, and it's not until you actually, as he said, meet the people. The couple that I had gone to that he had put on, they had me from hello because 
you can read about this stuff, you can see it on television, you can go to a movie about it, but until you hear it from the lips of the people that actually lived it, you'll never understand it and you won't feel the emotion and the, um, uh, the angst that these people had throughout their lives. And, I'm and sorry. I will, I didn't I, that's okay. No, please, and I will say it is getting harder and harder, as you know, to find someone who ex- lived this experience and could share so you know so we don't make these same mistakes in our in our future uh it was extremely difficult to find a speaker this year uh Mm. uh, but fortunately we have and uh we're really looking forward to it Um, thank you for that ed no no it's my my pleasure uh also happening on may 7th but in the evening or late afternoon the lions will be having a kentucky derby day Mm -hmm. at the american (laughs) legion with uh, food and uh, refreshments, and uh, they'll have uh, some some different prizes. There'll be a a fascinator uh, competition for who's wearing the best fascinator, and and for the men, I think it's the best uh, derby attire. I was going to say, you were going to wear a fascinator? They do have the bowler cap. It should be a lot of fun. There there will be more details coming out. I will thank everyone who came to support the uh, Sons of the American Legion for our St. Patrick's Day fundraiser. We served almost 200 meals in a takeout uh, capacity, and uh, they were raising money for veteran services. Uh, thank you to Chef Rob on Wheels, who did the corned beef, and we used oh, his good. and yeah, and his soda, his uh, Irish soda bread recipe is Design outstanding. <laughs> Yeah, my, my wife made the mistake of uh, having some in some other places and was like, can you have Rob call them and tell them how to make it? <laughs> so uh, very good, and uh, thank you to all the sons who participated. Um, and, you know, one thing I didn't mention with the Ukrainian thing, I was very, very impressed by uh, Rabbi uh, Weiner's uh, guitar skills. I'm now calling him Rabbi Garfunkel. <laughs> uh, he was uh, playing the guitar and singing, but... Um, I was talking to someone today, and if you do like singing for women, uh, there's a chorus that, that operates in Westchester, and, and one of our residents is a member. Uh, it's called the Golden Apple Chorus. It is an a cappella group. Very good. Uh, they, they sing, yep, four-part harmony, and mm-hmm. they're, they're outstanding. If anyone's uh, looking to, to join them, please look them up online. Uh, it's a wonderful organization. Uh, they do a lot. They were recognized in 2020 by Support Connection. Uh, they are always there, and they come in and they sing at the Lions concerts for uh, the National Anthem, and they've also done the uh, Armed Forces Medley. Mm-hmm. And this year they're going to be there doing hopefully a little more for our uh, tribute to the veterans. Excellent. So, yeah, so a lot, a lot going on there. But uh, Golden Apple Chorus, wonderful people. Thank you. All right, Councilman Esposito. All right. <clears throat> Happy St. Paddy's Day, everybody. I just wanted to make sure um, that I get that out there. Yeah, the visual was really cool. Uh, well, I had the uh, privilege of speaking. Um, and, um, and it was uh, a woman there holding a, a sign in Ukrainian. <laughs> and when I asked her what it meant, um, she, uh, she said it meant uh, glory to Ukraine, glory to our heroes. And apparently that's a phrase that they say to each other in Ukraine in passing. It's kind of like a greeting. And so she, she actually uh, translated, she actually spoke, she said it in Ukraine. And the first part is something like, and I'm going to, you know, butcher this up, but it's Slava Ukraini. And then with that, the entire, everybody just kind of like responded with the glory to our hero. So mm-hmm. it was, it, it became a big chant and it went on for a couple of minutes. Yeah. It was really quite, yep. quite a sight to see. And then they said something in Ukraine about Putin. I asked them not to translate that one. Yeah. Uh, I was a little... Um, yeah. It was a family event. Yeah. <laughs> so Maple Weekend is going on. It's the 19th and the 20th, as we mentioned, and it's also the 26th to the 27th. All the, uh, a lot of the restaurants are participating in that, so get in, out there and shop local. I know Firsties has the, what was it called? The shrimp wrapped bacon with... Bacon wrapped with we've had it. Maple bacon, yeah, bacon yeah. wrapped and no, dipped in maple syrup. And, and yeah. scallops, and por- I think, too, right? And they have pork chops, too. Yeah, so, I mean, everybody's involved. It's a great weekend. And, of course, Bry Hart at, at uh, White Oak is, is unbelievable. You can actually see the way maple syrup is being made and all the taps and stuff. We have the Matthew Cole Bleacher dedication on March 27th. Um, and baseball is back, and so are youth sports outdoors. Um, I'm, I'm so happy about that. 
I know that our friends at Shrubbook Athletic Club and uh, is having their uh, opening day on April 2nd. And, of course, APAR Field, uh, the Field of Dreams, is having their opening day with New York Town Athletic Club. And I want to thank you guys for everything you guys do for the community. I know my kids enjoyed all their time there, and I enjoyed coaching them. It's a lot of fun. It's a great thing for the, for the community. I can hear him saying, let's play ball. I can actually hear it. Oh, yeah. Them out. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. So uh, the Sorrentino Cup is coming up on the 23rd, right, John? Um, and uh, we, we did get a call from, uh, from a constituent, and she was having a problem um, on, uh, with, with her backyard flooding. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's right. And so the entire town, really, uh, highway, our engineering department, everybody was really involved. And the issue went on for a little while. We, they, they tried to mitigate um, what the situation was. And what we did was um, I, I asked Matt to go with me one day, and, and Dan, uh, the town engineer, was our tour guide, and he brought us around through the whole entire river and how Lake Osceola drains. Well, anyway, we kind of figured that there may be a problem under, uh, with one culvert. It's, the, it's, a, it's a state-owned culvert, so we really, our, the town wasn't really allowed to do anything. The state was committed to coming and fixing the problem, but we really didn't know if it was actually the cause of it all. Uh, what ended up happening, though, is the situation got much worse for the person, and uh, her, her septic tank was starting to fill up. And so, uh, so Matt and I... It did, fill it, did fill up. it did fill up. So Matt and I, in, in conjunction with a team, uh, we had the engineer, we had... Parks and Rec, we had Highway. We actually went down there, put waders on, got into the lake, into the river, and, uh, and opened up the clog. And we really didn't think it was going to work, and it did. And so um, it was something that, that we had to, you know, just take, uh, take action with. And I'm happy that we did that. And, um, and yeah. she called us two days later to tell us she has her septic tank back and her backyard and her, uh, her kid who's sick. Um, is doing is doing a little better, so I just wanted to share that with you. I know Susan Siegel brought something to my attention yesterday at the planning board meeting. Some good news, yeah. and what was the good news? She can't, she can't. The good news. Uh, uh, oh. Thank you, Councilman Lachterman. Um, so the good news is that she said that her electric bill went actually down this month, and I don't know if everybody's seeing that, but that's an exciting thing to see that you know something. It's, it's actually going trending in the the right direction, which is down. <laughs> the electric charge is down. That, that Kanye right. paid went back down to normal rates. So, so she said the electric charge went that, back down to normal rates that Con Ed was charging. So hopefully that stays that way, and that's, uh, and that's fantastic news. Um, again, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I defer to you, <laughs> Councilwoman. Thank you, Councilman Sergio Esposito. Um, I echo what the board has said. I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Tony Grasso for not only initiating the vigil for the prayer, but also reminding us that a small gesture from far away can have a great impact right. across the world, and that's exactly what happened. Yep. Um, I also want to wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day week, and I'm so sad that I will not be able to be dancing at Jefferson Village for the um, St. Patrick's Day slash San Giuseppe party, right? Because I will not be here this weekend. Um, I do want to give... Um, a humble thank you to Party City for dealing with my frantic um, husband's 50th. Happy birthday, Rick. Um, balloon order. I have to say that they are amazing to all of their patrons in the store. And I want to give a special shout out to a good friend of mine, Leslie Jacobson. She is starting with, um, with small businesses, the initiative of Art Around the Town. They will be taking place on March 26th at the Trailside Cafe. There will be live music. We hope that not only you come and admire her beautiful artwork, but also bring the town together, stay local, have a coffee, and remember that small businesses also lead to entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship lies right here in Yorktown, and I want to support every bit of that. So thank you for coming out this evening, and that is it. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, our highway superintendent, Dave Paganelli, sends his best to everyone uh, and sends his regrets for not making tonight's meeting. He did want me to reassure everybody uh, two things. First, as Councilman Diana said, uh, if, you do, uh, re if you do see a pothole in one of our local roads, please report it to our highway department. Uh, and secondly, he is in the process of reassessing our roads. As you may recall, uh, we released the ratings of our local roads to help uh, di dictate the 
the paving Asshole schedule. Yep. Uh, so people knew where on the on the schedule you may or may not be. Uh, and so he's in the process of reassessing our roads, and we'll be updating, and we'll be updating the uh, the rating sheet accordingly. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Tom Diana to read our proclamation recognizing Irish American Heritage Month. Thank you, Supervisor. Whereas the town of Yorktown celebrates March as Irish American Heritage Month, and whereas millions of Irish pass through Ellis Island entering New York City in the 19th century, fleeing hunger and injustice within their country, and whereas one of the first immigrants to pass through Ellis Island was Annie Moore, a 15-year-old from County Cork, Ireland, and whereas since 1762, Irish New Yorkers have celebrated the cherished fest of St. Patrick every March 17th, which stands as a day to celebrate the Irish heritage and share tradition with younger generation, and whereas Irish Americans have defended our nation, most notably through the fighting 69th, of New York State, mm -hmm. whose members fought in the American Civil War and World War I. And whereas Irish immigrants and Irish Americans have contributed greatly to American society, the state of New York and the town of Yorktown. And whereas Irish Americans are deeply committed to family and community and exhibit an incredible work ethic as shown through the many contributions to our town and society. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town of Yorktown recognizes March 2022 as Irish American Heritage Month. Thank you, Councilman. I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. With that, we will invite John McMullen to the podium, our there poet laureate. Come on up, John. <clears throat> I'm glad you wore your, your name tag today. And one of the most famous American poets, Joyce Kilmer, was killed as a member of, of, of the fight in 69, in World War I. Mm -hmm. What can I do? The bombs are falling. The mortars are shelling. Houses are falling. People are dying. What can I do? I don't know that Ukraine was, was so modern. Big fancy apartment houses. Five rooms with terraces, like, like the ones I once lived in. Now rubble with unlucky tenants blown up or buried alive. What can I do? People walking with a lifetime of possession in one bag, carrying children and pets, but leaving all behind as they flee death. What can I do? I never saw anything like this before. Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, we're all in newspaper wars with highlights at seven. This is real time, and it's horrible. What can I do? I could send a lot of money if I had any. I could go over and fight if I were 50 years younger. I could pray if I believed it would work. What can I do? So I watched, consumed by the horror, fearful of missteps that could bring on World War III, concerned for the first time ever for my family and home. But I have my answer. What can I do? I can only write. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. All right, we will go to courtesy of the floor. As a reminder, people do not need to wait for courtesy of the floor to bring any items to the attention of the town board. They can always call town hall at 914-962-5722, extension 200. You can find any of our contact information, any town board member contact information on the town's website. Same with the town clerk and our highway superintendent. As a reminder, courtesy of the floor will be limited to three minutes. And we ask that your comments be directed to the board and, of course, uh, remain respectful at all times. Thank you very much. First person up. Batter up. Hi. Good evening. Uh, Susan Siegel. Tonight I'm talking as a member of the Yorktown Trail Town Committee. And I'm pleased, very pleased, to share some good news with the town board and with the community that the Trail Town Committee has just received another grant from the Hudson Valley Greenway. Right. Okay, this is our third grant related to trails. And this one will be to install what we call trailhead signs 
at five locations, and the board knows about this because you gave us the blessing <laughs> to submit the application, and this is good news. There will trailheads, um, there will be at five locations, um, Woodlands, Granite Knolls, Yorktown Trailway, Hunterbrook Trail, and the Mohansic Avenue entrance off connection from Baldwin Road into FDR. And I know that many people don't even know about the Yorktown Trailway. Um, I, I'll, I'll bet if I asked a show of hands, very few would. And in fact, the planning board chairman told us that one day he had his car in service at, um, here in Yorktown Heights, and he lives in Shrub Oak, and he walked home using the trailway. And it's really a very easy trail. And if you've ever been to the Hunterbrook Trail, mm -hmm. it's very little known. And Granite Knolls, you go there for sports, you go there for pickleboard, pickleball, other things. And now you're going to have the, se the lovely sensory garden, in uh, the handicap playground. But it's very difficult to find the trails. So we're going to put this sure. on. The, um, the grant, though, is only for 50% of the project cost. So I'm here to ask the community for donations so we can finance the rest of the project. As with mo all of our other projects, the, the, the um, historic signage at the quarry at Sylvan Glen, the Mohansic Trailway, they have all, and, and the location signs on town roads have all been done with donations. The community has been very grateful. And we know during the pandemic, people discovered the trails. Yes, they, they are did. one of mm -hmm. Yorktown's wonderful assets along with the farms, the trails, and many of them are very easy to walk. You don't have to be a hiker. I mean, if I can do it, and I'm <laughs> 82, anybody can walk those trails, okay? So thank you very much. And our website is yorktowntrailtown.com. Um, you can send us donations at yorktowntrailtown uh, at gmail.com. Unfortunately, we're updating our website, and so the donate link doesn't work but our address is there, so be old-fashioned and write us a check, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll receive the money, and we hope to get this up very soon. Thank you very so, much, so and Susan, thank you again for your support. How much do you need? We need about $2,000. Okay. okay. All Okay. Good to know. Um, thank you. So, and we accept from $10 to $1,000 or more. It all ends more. up. <laughs> okay, thank and you. all donations are welcome, so we can enjoy this. And people who don't know where these trails are, experienced trail users know how to use the different apps oh, right. okay they, they can find it but we're trying to encourage the people who don't know where these trails are and if you ever want to know how do you get to that bridge across the Taconic Parkway yep okay yep. many bridge people don't know about that but it's very easy from one of the trails but I won't tell you which one <laughs> 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 thank you Susan we'll wait for the sign thank right? you very <laughs> much sign, exactly. thank you thank you next courtesy of the floor Fifty-five years, Dan Strauss, <laughs> resident. I'm going to use what Miss Siegel just said. That's what Yorktown's about: trails. It's about lakes, Sparkle Lake. It's about um, all the things since 19. I'm sorry, 1788. 234 years. My son said two years ago. He said Yorktown hasn't changed much. I don't think it should change. I want to thank you, this administration, for getting rid of the shopping carts. I mentioned it to you, Mr. Slater. For as long as I can remember, there has been an outpost at Keir Street and 118, and it's gone. I have no idea how it went, but I thank this administration. I thank uh, you for your uh, compliment about uh, my picking up litter. I also want to thank the town and the uh, Refuse and Recycle Department for doing that job, for doing the Battle of Yorktown and doing the second Battle of Yorktown. When I was on the road in my job, I used to call Yorktown a cow town in the middle of Westchester, northern Westchester, when I was out on the road in other places in the United States. That's how I described it, and that's what it is, and it should be into the future. It's frozen in time. It's not about apartments. I'm not for them. I'm going to just talk as long as I can, and I'm going to keep talking about the town of Yorktown. So when I'm, time is up, you can stop me midstream, and I'll continue next week <laughs> or two weeks from now. 
This is a little different deal. This is like an episode situation. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Somers Baldwin Place first. Have you been up there? There are hundreds of apartments. There are condos. There are townhouses. None of them is more than two stories high. None of them. Except maybe where Mrs. Green's is. I have to watch. I watch Mr. Slater. I know. There's also a home goods store there. Mm -hmm. The home goods store is moving. Who would have thought? With 400 apartments and condos and a lot of people driving through there, that's on a main thoroughfare. Who would have thought? And I don't know why they're moving, but they're moving to the Cortland Town Center. Why? When they have all those people, and they've had them for years, and there are more coming in. There are more condos and more apartments. What's up with that? Why are they moving? And there are only a few stores in that whole complex. Oh, I Your bingo next time. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Part two. The continuing it. saga. It's like Batman. Mr. Strauss. Okay. It's, it's, like Yellow, it's like Yellowstone. You didn't even give me another minute. Uh, good evening, Mark Lieberman, 24-year uh, resident. I hadn't planned on speaking until Ed uh, mentioned uh, Sweet Adelines, and my wife uh, directed Sweet Adelines for about 20 years. And you should know that uh, they sing at nursing homes, it's an international organization. It is a cappella. It's four-part harmony. Uh, they sing Flag Day at the Elks Club, or they used to. Uh, they have competitions once a year. Uh, the Northeast region used to compete down in Philadelphia. Uh, and they'd give awards to best quality, best small chorus. They'd break up into quartets. They'd have quartet competitions. So definitely, if you like to sing, uh, not like me, I like to listen. Nobody <laughs> likes to hear me sing. Uh, but if you like to sing, uh, uh, definitely think about joining the Golden Apple Chorus, which is the Sweet Adeline's uh, Chorus for Westchester. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks, thanks for bringing it up. Thanks, no thanks, thanks Mr. Lieberman. Thanks, Mark. Next. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? That's it. Motion to close courtesy of the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Any comments from the board? I, I had a couple, if I may. Sure. So, Susan, w one thing that you might want to look into, you, uh, sort of mix your, I know you like the old-fashioned mail, but you could do little, like a little sign to add on that, that you could laminate for, for a while while you're trying to raise money and do a QR code that links right to a flyer about, you know, how to donate. And people can, you know, you can put, hey, help our trails. Have the QR code. People put, point their phone at it, get on it, and they can donate some money. Ed could show you how to do it. Uh, no, I can't. But <laughs> if you want to go out to Germany, my daughter might be able to help okay, you with we that. We don't know how to really do it, but it works. <laughs> I, I know I'm not supposed to say something, but, but we, we yeah, will yeah, have QR uh, yeah. codes on all of, on all of these good. signs. Just, yeah. right, okay. It was a suggestion. Oh, right. Thank uh, you. That's good to And to, if I'm not mistaken, I think last time when they were talking about the signs, those QR codes are going to have the maps. And, and other information on them. They're going to have more yeah. information about the trail. Good, yeah. good. So maybe we'll have a donate. Here. So, Dan, the carts, uh, you know, I know I've spoken <coughs> to the manager at Uncle Giuseppe's quite a few times, and he's been very responsive, so I'm glad to hear that it's been kept up. I know that we've also spoken to Beaver Ridge to see if they could help out. So hopefully that keeps going. Please let us know if it lapses back, though, and, you know, we could keep, keep trying to get them to work with us on making sure of that. And... Uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Lieberman bringing up the, uh, the, the, the Sweet Adeline Golden Apple Chorus. Uh, you're absolutely right. They do some wonderful things. Matter of fact, I was talking to one of our new assisted living uh, memory cares, the artists over in Somers, about them today. And, they're, you know, they're hoping that they'll perform there. Uh, really great group. Unfortunately, without the advertisement of, of knowing and finding people who could sing, and I, I don't think there are any real age requirements there, uh, you know, they'll disappear and we'll lose a, a really, really beautiful thing if, if, if people don't keep right. going and, and moving in. So that's why, and, and it is amazing uh, when you go to a, when you go to a, uh, 
a, a nursing care facility and see what it means to these people that are that are there and the memories that it brings back and how much joy you could bring in a short time. I've, I've been at the Country House when they've sang and I've been at uh, uh, Drum Hill over in Peekskill when they sang as well. And they are, they are an amazing group of ladies. And just even hearing them at the concerts, which to me is impactful, but nowhere near as impactful as, as what they do in our senior communities. So thank you for echoing it. Thanks, man. All right. Uh, I just, if, do you have any comments, Councilman? No? Uh, yes. yes. Susan, that's great. I'll tell you, they, they actually got that grant fairly quickly. I was surprised that it, it came through so quick, and that's, that's really a good thing for the trail town. Do well with the grant yeah grant yeah yeah program. and 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 hopefully hopefully people donate to that and uh, you know I I think part of the thing with the carts as Ed said is uh, you know Uncle Giuseppe's has, has has helped out but I think unfortunately Kmart closed which had carts and now they don't have any so that probably yielded a limit at that point um, so it's not a good thing they closed but it stopped the carts and uh, Uncle Giuseppe's been rather vigilant as as well as um, uh, Beaver Ridge, um, and and you, Mark, you're right. That it's it's a it's a it's a dying breed that's going to get out there and and you know stretch their vocal cords and sing like that. And uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's great that they do it, and they're a wonderful bunch of ladies, and they have great voices. They don't want to hear us sing, Mark. You're right. I just really want to congratulate Trail Town as well. They're a yeah. great asset to have in the community. Um, the trail, the trails in Yorktown, forty or forty miles. Forty connected miles, more yep. than any other town. More than town any other town in Westchester County. It's a great natural asset. If you haven't had a chance to get out to our trails, it's a great place for kids. It's a great place for adults. It's a great place for seniors. It, it really, it, it really is special that we have this natural resource. Uh, and I also want to thank one of my predecessors, Linda Cooper, who was integral in in starting all this with the trails. Uh, and so you know, it's just great to see this continuing and continue to recognize you know, some of the natural assets that, that we have here. They truly are the yeah. vein of Yorktown. Yeah, yeah. they are. And yeah. Susan, if you need any help with IT-related stuff or anything like that, I'd be happy to pitch in. All right, seriously. Maybe you could do a GoFundMe or whatever the, the other thing is, um, you know, in order to be able to take donations online. Because I think that, I think... Our website comes to the donate button doesn't work. I checked but maybe you can help them with their website, yeah. too. Yeah, so... You but, should just talk to Sergio but you off, could, offline. You could, you could yeah, pretty much them. set it up, yeah. <laughs> Great. Anything else? Uh, no. no that one cut you off. Good. No, I'm good. No, I'm great. Great. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on to res uh, to resignations to <laughs> <laughs> resolutions about resignation. Resolution. About uh, we are gonna accept the resignation received by Grace Taus from the Water Department. We'll accept the retirement of Shirley McCord from the John C. Hart Memorial Library, and we are going to accept the retirement of Maria Stolfi of the John C. Hart Memorial Library. We will also appoint. Nizreen Corey to Office Assistant Automated Systems of the Building Department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motions carry. For advertisements, we're going to authorize the town clerk to advertise a bid for ultraviolet lamp replacement at the Yorktown Heights Water Pollution Control Plant. I thought I saw Dan Ciarcia here, our town he engineer. Yes, he was here a minute ago. Uh, but I know he's going to be happy about that. Authorize the town clerk. Uh, to advertise bid for dry cleaning services for the police department. I'm sure they're going to be happy about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're also going to authorize the town clerk to advertise a bid for an Avant 640 tractor for the highway department, which is something that uh, Dave brought talked up, yep. about at our last work session. So we'll stop there and we'll entertain a motion. So motion. moved. So moved. All in favor? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Don't, don't be my, like, motion, car cue guy. Motions carry. Okay. Check. Resolutions. We are going to approve a change order for the fence, uh, the King fence, f uh, for the inclusive playground for the amount of 660 I know, $660. Uh, this is uh, due to the escalated cost <coughs> of aluminum uh, and the material cost, just like everything else, going up. Yeah. We're going to authorize the release of letter uh, of a letter of credit uh, in the amount of seven thousand six hundred dollars to Zappico Construction LLC for the Orchard View subdivision located on Sherry Drive. Mm -hmm. We're going to award I'm sorry award the rebid award the rebid for five various chemicals for the Yorktown Heights water pollution plant to Slack Chemical. Approved. 
You're going to, and I don't know if Dan's here. He's right there. Dan, do you want to speak about the next resolution? Jacqueline Lane? Let's stop there, actually, and take a motion yeah. for what we just read. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Dan, you want to talk about Jacqueline Lane real quick just to, to catch everybody up? You're looking sharp. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Wait a minute here. Hold on. Um, so this is a, uh, a vacant lot that was part of the McKenna subdivision mm -hmm. on Jacqueline Lane. It's been vacant since the subdivision was done. Uh, so someone has purchased it and is looking to build a single family home because of the, the amount of excavation it requires uh, a town board resolution to approve. Uh, so long and short of it, it's a single family house. Uh, there's comments we received from the Tree Commission, Conservation Board, and, uh, and my office as well. So uh, as long as we incorporate those into the draft resolution, which you have before you, we're uh, good to go on it. Any questions from the town board? There are conditions. That must be met prior to the supervisor signing plans that are detailed here. So that has to do with the water and the erosion and all that stuff, right? There, uh, there are well, some. There are Is conditions. The there are conditions uh, of the for tree for, of the tree and stormwater permit that are included, uh, and that is detailed in the resolution. And there are other subsequent conditions that need to be met as well. Uh, it actually has the full stormwater pollution yes, plan book. Goes along mm -hmm. with it any, too, any, so that touches on some of those issues. Nope. No. Okay. I don't have any. We'll make a motion. Motion. I'm sorry, John. Come on up. You need. You need to you come, need to come, up, come to the mic, otherwise the man behind the curtain is going to throw a camera at you. Nobody does. Yep. Uh, we sent a memo on Friday. It's not listed here, so. It's not listed. Okay. So can we? Okay. So then we're going to amend. Amend that, right? Amend the resolution to include the resol uh, the memo dated March 11th from the planning department. Twenty twenty two. So we'll amend the resolution to include the planning department memo from March 11th, twenty twenty two. Okay. So we have a. Yes. I think we have a. Do we have a, had a motion. We had a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have a uh, Mr. Tegeter. JT. Mr. Tegeter, you want to join us? I see we have Mr. Porco here in the back. Danny, hello. Hello, Danny. Okay, so this is a resolution to approve the 930 East Main Street Shell gas station. Uh, to replace the existing gasoline storage tanks. Just <clears throat> this resolution is specifically about the tanks. That's yep. correct. So you saw last week the overall project, which mm -hmm. they, the applicant presented to you in total, which is tank replacement, gasoline tank replacement that's in the ground. Uh, also, they are modifying the canopy, re redesigning it a little bit, although it will not, the structure will not change. Just mm -hmm the fascia, mm -hmm. and they're redoing the signage. So it's really a rebranding project with the tank replacement. The tank replacement and the rebranding are really separate right. projects, and in the resolution is written some of that wording that basically states that they're unrelated. Uh, in relation to the tank replacement, that does not affect the overall design of the site plan that it has been approved right. a number of years ago. Uh, so. The request from the applicant was to break that off and let them proceed with that yep. because that is really a safety and environmental issue. And so, so the tanks, I think, were what, 20, 20 years 30 old? Years 30 years plus old. 30, 30, yeah. 30? 30. Okay, 30 years old. So basically they're, they're pulling those yep. out, putting new putting ones right back, back in the same spot. It's going to look exactly the same uh, as it was when they are finished. Okay. So and the new tanks are going to be double wall. Double wall, again. fiberglass, right. the standard, yep. yeah. what, needs to be what is required. And then their yeah. sign, their sign is uh, request is going through the normal referral process. That's right. That'll Very be good. an amendment to the special permit. So it'll be the rebranding, the redesign of the canopy fascia, uh, and maybe some other minor tweaks that they have in store. But I don't think there are too much, if any. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? No. No. We'll make a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That one I any opposed? Nope. Okay. <laughs> then with that. Let's kick it. 
Thanks, John. For more sessions. Thanks All right, with that, uh, if there's no other business before the board, then we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Oh, All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Yorktown, thank <laughs> you very much. Hey, John. Have a good night. John Taylor.